Hey guys, it's a very overcast and nasty day today. I just thought I'd show you um, tight corner here, but this is the original uh, grid panel. So grid tied panel. Uh, and I had a small generator panel over here and I switched it to another large critical loads panel. And then, so this, the shop is way out uh, in that direction where I have the inverters. So 150 something feet away. And I ran the screens into here. I don't think I ever showed that part of it. Um, so I wanted to show that. I still needed to show the guts of the critical loads panel just to go over some things with you guys if you haven't uh, done that yet. And then just a couple of the, not settings, but just the the monitoring on these. If you guys haven't fiddled with them yet or if you haven't read enough of the manual, you can, uh, you can scroll up or down, depends on where you're at, and see the actual amperage that's going into the batteries right now made by the PV. So very overcast today, but you'll get little tiny, not breaks in the clouds, but just a little more, a lighter look. And so you can see that's making 40 amps. Now we're down to 37. Um, so that's one of the settings you can do. Uh, let's see if I can get a better look here. You can also go up and actually see, uh, obviously how many kilowatts the arrays are making each so if you were to add those both up it would be the same as the 48 amps right now times or 50 amps times 48 so that it's just easier to um i guess scroll up and look at the kilowatt uses if that's what you're interested in or you know these can charge each unit can charge at 120 amps each at 48 volts so this unit here is hooked to the larger array. So I will hit 100 amps with that, 100, 110 amps sometimes on a, a nice sunny day. And then this, is, this has two smaller arrays, but it still does really well. So between the two, I can get a lot of uh, amperage out on a sunny day. But right now, even with it nasty out, we'll still get... Um, you know, hopefully a good state of charge by the end of the day since it's raining and stuff. Um, so tomorrow we'll start. I think there's sun tomorrow. Anyway, there that is a couple of the settings on there that you may not look at. You can also change to where the screen stays on there. What's an example? That number like 14 or something? I can't remember. So that the, the screen stays on what you want it to, which is nicer. Uh... So, uh, let's see. Also, these are essentially useless, but people may care about that. Um, I don't really care about what percentage of the inverter I'm using. I actually like to look. I leave it most of the time on wattage to see what I'm using. Uh, since I don't have them hooked up to Wi-Fi, I just come into the utility room if I'm ever curious. Otherwise, they run themselves anyway. But I'm, if I'm ever curious and I have the stove on and the... The dryer on at the same time and just to see how much they're actually uh, producing and or hot water heater whatever as you can see right now we're not really running a lot so uh, they're not doing a bunch as far as they're, they're supplying plenty from even a cloudy day and charging at the same time so they're doing really well and that's what you want with these units and i've explained it before but with these units I explained it in the balancing video. You want them to have enough PV or solar panels on each of the units to be able to supply the loads so they're not constantly sucking from the battery and to supply the battery at the same time. So uh, that is ideal. If you can see this icon charging and you can see the wattage you're using, that means you're at least making more than the wattage. That you're using but you know when you have like say uh the other day when i had the dryer and uh running and we were doing some other stuff too knowing that's coming straight from the sun it's not even really what happens is and i can show you guys in a later video when the elements come on in the 
uh, oven or if the dryer's on, you'll see that, and that cycles on and off too, you'll see that kick on and uh, you'll see the battery take a small bit of the load for a moment and then it switches over to PV. So you'll see it um, on these units or even on my shunts outside, the Chinese battery monitors, you'll see it for a second take a tiny amperage hit just to balance the load, and then it'll supply everything from the sun after that. So that's something a lot of people don't talk about with these. They do need batteries to be able to, when you're running on 240, larger loads. So on 120, they can actually supply everything just from the sunshine, uh, if you have enough sun and enough PV. On two, 240, they do need the batteries, but that is just to balance them just for that moment. And then they can uh, they can take it over from there with the sunshine. So really, the, again, if you see this on any type of day, that means your loads are being supplied and you're still charging. So there's other stuff I could go over with these that I've just picked up as I've, you know, gone through them. I think I had that on voltage. Yeah. So that's the actual wattage being used. Um, but... You know, a lot of it with the icons and everything here, it's it's very simple. I mean, they made it to where you can you can just look at the different um, things, what's happening, you know, straight from sun to on up. But uh, those other little settings to see how much amperage you're using, kilowatts and everything, um, it's not too bad, but it's not something you may pick up right away. Like a lot of these, it'll tell battery voltage, which doesn't really matter <laughs> too much with these lithium iron phosphate. And then some other settings like, uh, uh, yeah, there's just some useless stuff in here. But wattage, amperage coming in from PV, kilowatts coming in from PV, those are the kind of things you're going to want to know. And then, of course, you can check the daily usage too or, or daily uh, input and monthly. And then it keeps a record, you know, how many megawatts you've made over how many months. But uh, that, anyway, I'm, I've let this run on too long, but that is the, the gist of what I wanted to talk about this time. I have to make a video on the EG4s that I got and removed still. I'm hoping to get that resolved here soon, but who knows with them. Um, and why I'm using the MPP LV6548s again. Uh, so hopefully I can splice some videos of what my lights look like before and after. Uh, well... You know what after looks like. You know what grid power looked like on a regular dimmer switch lights. It just looks like lights. On the EG4, it looked like, um, well, it's really something. So uh, I took a short video. I should have taken a longer one. But yeah, I'll, I'll splice that into the next video once I'm finished resolving it with them. Who knows how many more weeks that'll be, but we'll see. All right, talk to you guys soon. Thanks.